What's up, y'all? My name is Tobias Rose. I'm the principal and the creative director here at Complex Creative. Hi, everyone. I'm Chantal Winston, and I'm the director of operations at Complex Creative. And we are both alums of North Carolina Central University. Uh, we both graduated in 2005. Um, we both majored in art, in concentration in visual communications. And we went on and, and we did our own thing. So we just want to talk to you a little bit about our journey and some of the things that helped us get to this point, as well as some pointers to get you to where you want to be. Yeah. So how about we give you guys our journey, how we made it from North Carolina Central University, made it all the way from the yard to Black Wall Street. All right, so we started out in the art department. I started there in 1999. She started there a little later. 2002. 2002, so she's a young buck. In 99, you didn't really have uh, the internet as we know it. Um, we had Black Planet, we had MSN Messenger, Yahoo, we had those things, but we didn't have the sophisticated network social media outlets. We didn't have uh, websites as you know them. So we would go online and just search for things and print it out. Um, for me, I was a physics major. And so as a physics major, you don't really get a chance to do, you know, really cool visual stuff. You sit around and you put together formulas that will hopefully help change the world. And me, I didn't really care about changing the world in that way. What I cared about was making the world a more beautiful place. And so for me, I decided that uh, my journey would start at the art department because in order for me to get to where, that I, where I needed to be, I needed that art background. So I decided to change my major a year, two years in uh, to art. And that's where I met Chantal, who already had it worked out. She already had it figured out and knew what she wanted to do. Um, so she was an art major. Uh, met her when she came in in 2002. And then um, for me, I guess at that time, um, I was trying to just get my portfolio together. I mean, that was the biggest thing for me. Um, you know, I had the practice. The practice was my first company, but it was kind of the name of my freelancing uh, company. And so I do encourage you guys as students, you know, freelance, um, find an opportunity to, to work with people and understand um, what you don't know. That was probably the most humbling experience working with my first client and getting fired by my first client. Um, <laughs> you know, he uh, he was actually very understanding. He knew that this was our first project and um, he's a good guy. In fact, I just ran across some of his stuff. But the name of the game back then was getting hired. So. I always worked on my portfolio and I always looked at other people's portfolio. That was important to me. Um, you know, we didn't have access to Creative Cloud like you do now and Behance and those things. So I was always going to other uh, university websites to see what their grad students were producing, to see what the students were producing, um, schools that had sophisticated graphic design programs. And that was helpful to me because I wanted to compete against those people. And I felt that the things that I got at NCCU gave me a leg up because I had this cultural element um, that they didn't have when they graduated. So I used that to my advantage. And um, so, you know, so on and so forth, uh, to make a long story short, I got a job working in the IT department. And that came from complaining about the website to the chancellor at the time. Uh, <laughs> chancellor Ammons came to a, a fireside chat that we had at Latham. Latham no longer exists. It's now a parking garage. But back then, it was a dorm. That's where I stayed at. And uh, I remember during the fireside chat, I said, you know, the website needs a lot of work. Um, we don't look like a legitimate university. Now, mind you, this was 2001. And he told me, I never forget, he said, you know, that's, that's, been a, uh, that's been a sore spot for me. And I've wanted to fix it. So he said, here is the number to our director of public relations, talk to her tomorrow. I went to her and at first she didn't take me seriously, but I had a portfolio. I had my work together. I looked like I had been doing this work. I had not been doing this work, but it looked like I did because I had hypothetical projects. I had projects that I had made up um, just because when I was given this opportunity, I wanted it to look like I had been doing the work. And at the time, I thought I was pretending. I thought I was pulling something over on him. But this is common practice. This is what people do. Um, and that was what got me my first legitimate design job. And so I was responsible for designing and developing NCCU's first, uh, I, I guess our first big website. 
Um, and I do want to shout out Derek Brinson, who is uh, still there. He's a webmaster there at NCCU uh, for putting together the very first website. Um, so shouts to, to Derek Brinson, my old coworker. Love you, man. But uh, that's my story, Chantal. I don't want to keep going on and on. Do you want to tell them a little bit about you? Yeah, sure. Um, so for my story, um, it's kind of similar in terms of needing a portfolio and that being a real critical element um, for designers or just creatives in general. Um, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what work did I do throughout my three years, three and a half years at NCCU. What work did I do that's you know still good enough that I am proud to include it in my portfolio? And um, I learned that you know things that you did early on, like freshman year, sophomore year might not be up to par um, and so like Tobias mentioned with the hypothetical projects I had to go find some stuff so I went online and found um, websites that I felt like were trash and redid them um, did the same with logos did that with publications flyers all kinds of stuff just so that I could build up a really comprehensive portfolio that could show the variety of skills that I had across platforms across mediums and all those kinds of things so I do think that that is definitely a critical piece um, and with that, I was able to, you know, get a couple of part-time jobs immediately following graduation. So I did um, started at Complex doing design. Um, and while I was at Complex, um, part-time as the first employee, maybe second employee. First. You you were the first intern, and okay. then we transitioned you to employee. Yeah, your okay. your employee zero 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 one <laughs> okay. is still on there too. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So um, I was definitely you know doing that kind of work um, part time, but then I also um, worked on campus at NCCU in one of the new departments. Um, doing some design work, mostly print. So I was doing a lot of brochures, flyers, logos, that kind of work for a department on campus. And then I also worked at a local sign shop, which gave me the opportunity to um, do some more branding work. So oh, a lot gotta of- shout them out. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. so RTP Signs and Graphics, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who um, works closely with Complex. We refer yeah. them to everyone yeah. um, today. Yeah. Um, but there I did a lot of like logo work and just thinking about print work. Um, so a lot of my focus starting out was around print. Um, and I, I did that for the, the first year before I joined NCCU's PR team um, or public relations team. And, and, and that's where things just kind of took off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I want to back up because she mentioned complex. I didn't tell you guys how it started. So, you know, we met in 2002. I, I want to say we met when she first got to, to NCCU. Uh, so let me set the stage. We met in 2002 and we didn't really become close back then. Um, we was, it was just kind of, this girl who worked in the art department, she was a freshman. Um, excuse me, she didn't work in the art department. You were in the art club. That's what it was. So this was 02, and at that time, I was a year in, I think roughly a year, maybe two years in with the practice. And the practice was a company that, I, like I said, I started when I was a, a student. So I was also working at the IT department. So I had that job, and by this time, I, I say 2005, by that time, I was pretty comfortable in my job. Uh, the chancellor at that point had me working on a lot of his, his own special projects. So I did the chancellor's website. Uh, I had to do a website for the Duke lacrosse um, uh, issue. <laughs> I guess that's the best way to say it. So I had to do a website for that. I had to do a website for a lot of things on campus. And uh, at the time, I was, uh, I don't know what was wrong with me. I decided that it was a good idea to work at a video game store, um, run this company to practice, work in the IT department, and be a full-time student. That's not sustainable. So uh, obviously at some point the, the EB Games job, that went away. Um, that was something that I actually did while I was in school um, because I liked video games and it was extra money. So that went away and I graduated. And once I graduated, I decided that it was just way too hard for me to try to do all those things at the same time. It just didn't make sense for me to, to, to do the practice, to do to work in IT. It just didn't make sense. It wasn't sustainable. So a year later, less than a year later, I decided to leave my job at NCCU. Now, this was 2006. Um, Chantal had just graduated, and we were trying to figure out what the next move in life was going to be. So luckily I had picked up a lot of this experience working in the IT department. And also I worked for an, an agency out of Chicago. Um, so I did that work and, and working with the practice. So I picked up a lot of steam doing that. And the freelance just got to a point where it was hard for me to manage that and manage my job. And uh, I remember going to my boss 
and he was the CIO at the time, Greg Merrow. Shout out to Greg. Greg said, uh, I had a feeling this day was going to come. Do you want to work part time? And I said, you know what? I don't think this would make sense if I work part time. I need to be put in a situation where I need to survive. And that's what I did. And so uh, in 2006, I decided to leave my, my comfortable full-time job where, you know, I was actually getting ready. I didn't have benefits yet. I was getting ready to get benefits. Uh, that was about to start happening. I decided to quit and uh, focus on the company. So in May 2006, that's when Complex Creative was officially born. And so Complex, we, we got in an office that was in the same space as uh, where Little Brother and Ninth Wonder, where those guys were recording, and uh, it was it was loud. That first off, <laughs> that first office was loud, but it was interesting because, you know, we would come into the office, and when I would come in in the mornings, Crisis was over there making beats, or Ninth was over there making beats, and uh, or Fonte was getting ready to go home, and so that was how we started, and we did we thought this we were big time back then. We all thought we had made it because we were in this dusty warehouse building in East Durham. And we had, we did make it. Um, we had done something, we did something that, that grew and something that was able to ensure that other people were, were gonna have a job. Um, and I didn't realize the importance of, of building a company back then, but that's what we had done. This wasn't a freelance thing anymore. This was a real business. And so in May 2006, Complex Creative was born. Um, and I could keep going on and on about that. We only have 20 minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so while we were doing Complex, I'll say this. Um, Chantal had an interesting journey because I'll be honest with you. When we were starting out, there was just no way you could sustain me and sustain her as an employee and whatever else we were going to try to do. So uh, she had to go off and get another job. And so she did that and still worked with Complex part-time. And while working at Complex and doing the work that she was doing, I believe at the time it was at NCCU, she decided to get, uh, she decided to take advantage of the fact that I think there was some kind of education thing where you could get a discount on your tuition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so while I was in um, NCCU's PR office, um, well, working on campus in general, um, you, you have the opportunity of, you know, getting a discounted tuition rate. And so um, while I was in the office, though, I kind of learned about marketing communications and I, I gained an interest in that and realized that I really um, enjoyed the strategy behind behind that kind of stuff. And so I decided that getting my MBA just makes the most sense. Um, and so that's why I'm a double eagle. Um, I got my MBA in 2013. Um, and so even while pursuing my MBA, that's when I realized that um, I not only loved business, but I also had an interest for project management, which was something that I didn't really know too much about before that. Um, so taking a project management course and learning about, you know, organization and all that kind of stuff, that's just in my wheelhouse. That's how I function. And so, um, you know, pursuing my MBA made sense. Um, and after that class, it, I, I realized that Complex didn't have someone in that capacity. So, you know, why not be me? And so that's kind of how I shifted from being a designer on a part-time capacity to um, doing some project management work part-time while I was still at NCCU, you know, picking up the skills there. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, so I was around while she was getting that, that MBA. So it was interesting looking at her homework and a lot of times with her homework, I would look at it and say, man, that's something that I did the other day. I just did that. And she'd have a formula. She'd be like, you can just plug this in. I'm like, nah, forget that formula. I'm do that in my head because I don't need those formulas. I had this archaic way of, of trying to figure all these things out that made sense to me, but it was really long. And you can just plug in numbers into these, these, these cute formulas that they gave them in school. <laughs> so it made, it made a lot of sense bringing Chantal to Complex as a, at that time as a project manager, because like she said, um, she just has this sense of organization that when combined with design, when combined with business and design and, and marketing, it makes sense and it can help make businesses better. And so we and before you move on, oh, okay. um, and at that time, we already had um, full time two, maybe one or two full time designers. We had a web developer, um, a, a, a business development person, mm -hmm. as well as a studio assistant. So at that time, we already had a team of 
about five people. And so it made sense to have someone in a project manager capacity to help add structure to the workflow and to make sure that everyone's working really efficiently and you know we're meeting the client's expectations at various points throughout a project right and then for me as a business owner that also puts me in a position where i can actually run the business um, early on when you're starting something like this it makes sense for you to, to run the business and to do the business together um, and then you get to a point where you realize that you are so distracted by doing the business, you're no longer running the business. So you're not able to make decisions for everyone because you're right there with them doing all the work that needs to get done instead of looking at things from a, from a perspective where you can see little things happening and make a small change or, or train this person so they can be in that role. So, you know, that was some of the stuff that, that I think that, that I learned and that I'm still learning. Like complex has been the biggest lesson for me, uh, the biggest challenge, it's been something that has taught me a lot about myself. And I think with any company, any business you decide to start, that's one of the things that you're gonna find out. Um, it teaches you more about yourself than it teaches you about business, as, as crazy as that seems. Uh, because in doing business, you start to find out what you will and you won't do. You find out where you may be weak at. You find out where you may have underdeveloped skills. You know, for example, with Chantal, this innate ability to organize things, you know, that's what she enjoys. She enjoys putting things together and making things make sense and bringing order to things. You know, I enjoy creating something from nothing. Um, that's just what has always intrigued me. I love making things that come out of our brains. I love giving people the ability to make things that come out of their brain. Like I love creativity. Um, and I do love business. I really love business. Part of the reason why I do the work that I do in the community now. And so, you know, now Complex, we're a consultancy. And we still have, uh, you know, two designers working here right now. We're working through a pandemic. We have Izzy over here developing and coding and, and crushing it right now. Um, you know, our team, we, we have purposely kept it small so that we can manage it. And we've kept it at a place that we've wanted it to be at because this is what we want to do. Uh, I love this business. I love this, this craft. And uh, I'd say, if I'm gonna give you guys any tips, because I believe that's why you guys are all here or, or you're watching. Um, if you didn't pick it up and what we were saying, portfolio is key. Uh, your portfolio in, in just about any creative discipline is going to be key. Whether you're going to be a rapper or you want to be an architect. Uh, a rapper needs to have music. You need to show people what you can do. You need to show a body of work. You know, if you're gonna be an architect, architect, you need to do the same thing. You need to have a portfolio to show a body of work. But what happens when you come out of school and you don't have a body of work? You make one, you create one. Just like Chantal said, hypothetical work, hypothetical websites. Uh, you know, for me, hypothetical websites, hypothetical graphic design, and then you have clients. You can't have a client pay for you to be uh, educated on their project. They want you to come in with that expertise already. So I would say, if anything, work on your portfolio. And still, I think you should also compare yourself with your peers. Continue to do that as an exercise. Um, have a website. Totally, have a website. That's one of the things that I told, I've told designers for years, have a website. Um, Having a, a core flood or chlorophyll and or Behance and the dribble, that stuff is great. You need to have that. But consider that a social media platform for designers. You still need to have a place for people to go when they want to find out about you. Um, I could go on. Chantal, do you have any tips? You want yeah, to you? what I would um, also add to what Tobias is talking about is um, keeping an open mind when it comes to just learning. Mm -hmm. um, because again, I started out as a designer and I thought my path was headed straight there and I went all around. Um, I started there and went all around. So, I mean, and I, I, I credit that to keeping an open mind to just learning new things. Mm -hmm. So taking advantage of every opportunity, every interaction with people, all the resources that are provided to you. Um, so that could include, um, you know, doing some extra work in your free time in order to pick up new skills or to advance in your career. Um, it could be um, more networking events to just get in contact with those people that will help move you forward or connect you to the people to move forward. Um, there, there's just so many opportunities that 
be presented to you and it's important that you take advantage of that and just learn and absorb as much as you can um, because you know as you keep an open mind to everything you'll learn that there's a lot of things that you're actually interested in and you could add to your your, your body of work or, or your experience and your skill set. And so I think those are those are important things for me and I would definitely recommend that for you guys as well. Mm -hmm. when, when it comes to your creative disciplines and having this body of work and doing the things that you need to do in order to get to where you wanna be, you wanna get on as a designer at another agency, um, become a consultant, uh, be a freelancer, or work as an in-house designer, the craft is important. The craft is key. Uh, for us, it is design, it is marketing, it is strategy. And so with that, that means that we need to be, uh, I always say we want to be ahead of the curve. You always want to research what it is that you're doing so that you know what the curve is. You always want to try to do what, it need, what needs to be done in order to get better. So it doesn't stop. This thing that you're doing right now in school, it won't stop, it shouldn't stop. If it does stop, something's wrong. You should always be learning, always work to get better. And when someone says no, use that as ammunition, use that as fuel so that you can go back and, and work on your craft and get better and better and better. Um, I'd say also, you know, you guys have a unique perspective because you are coming from North Carolina Central University. Use everything that you have. Use this as an asset. That cultural awareness that you're gaining, unfortunately you're not on campus, but you're gaining right now through this experience is gonna be one of your greatest assets if you use it the right way. So, you know, I say that to say, you know, really dig into who you are, this experience, and what it's teaching you. Because every lesson that you're getting from this experience are gonna be things that you can add to your toolbox, your creative toolbox, when you go out there into the real world. And that's what's gonna separate you from those people that you're out there comparing your work against. And then to add to that, I would say, as you're seeking employment and you're considering different agencies or different firms to work at, look at their body of work. Mm -hmm. um, try to you know figure out whether or not you wanna produce work on that level. and. Compare that to your existing portfolio to figure out what work you need to do now in order to get a job there. Yeah. Um, because they're going to be looking for candidates that are already working at the level that they're producing. Um, even though you're entry level, they're going to expect a certain quality of work just like their customers are going to or their clients. So you want to look at their body of work, compare it to yours, and then make improvements on yours so that you can be on that level because that'll make you a more viable candidate. Um, I think that that's definitely an important piece as you're just kind of doing doing your search, that, that self-evaluation um, and being really honest with yourself and where you're at um, is, is important. You know, I don't think that can be overstated because that was something someone told me that the New York trip that a lot of the art, art students go to, I had someone in the agency tell me, um, he, he pointed to a, a Burger King poster that they had on the wall. And you, we've all seen those Burger King posters when we passed by Burger King. And he said, if you can create work on that level, then you have a job here. And it seemed easy enough. You just want a picture of a hamburger with some text on top of it? That's easy. Nah, it ain't as easy as you think it is because they're talking about art directing photo shoot to create that burger and make that burger look the way that it looked. They did all of that. Now I can do that work. But you have to remember when you're going out there and you're looking for a job, the company doesn't want to hire you to teach you. They want to hire you so that you can help them make money. So you need to be a package. And then from there, that company invests in you and they want to invest in making you better, not trying to train you to get to the fundamentals. So, uh, so again, looking at those portfolios, looking at the work that they create and presenting them with that kind of work or work on that caliber, that's how you get a job. Well, I guess we've probably worn out our welcome at this point. I think exactly. we've gone past <laughs> the point. But uh, NCCU, thank you so much for having us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Chantal, any last words? No, that's it. Best of luck. Best of luck. And I think if I could say any last words to you guys, it would be Eagle Pride. I love you all. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye.